Hi YouTubers and subscribers and welcome again to Starry Hilder Solar Tutorial 101. Now today I'm really excited because there are a lot of people who uh, aren't really interested in going fully 100% off the grid but you guys really want to empower yourself with being a little bit more prepared, a little bit more self-sustainable. And that really does include those people who still are connected to the grid. Well, good for you guys for waking up but we did this way many, many years ago. We were living on the grid, but we had concerns. We had concerns with not being prepared, with being 100% dependent on that electricity. So we started waking up, doing some research, and what did we do? Well, you're looking at it. These are our very first set of solar panels that we bought while we were connected to the grid. And not only did we buy solar panels, but we did a little research and got ourselves an inverter. Then we got ourselves a charge controller and there we had it. A small system as a backup just in case. And a lot of people have been commenting and giving me feedback and saying, you know what, sorry, we don't want to move off-grid. We just want to be prepared and a little more self-sustaining. So how do you do a small setup? Well, today that's what my tutorial is going to be about. Creating and getting a small setup that you can actually buy all of the components online and do yourself. No kidding! You can do it yourself. You don't need a solar expert. So come along today and I'm going to walk you through some of the things that we did and give you a little advice on getting okay, started. Okay, the very first component that we're going to talk about is charge controllers. Now I did a lot of research um, many many years ago and decided to go with the Cobra. We, You see we have two. Why do we have two? Well, you know, back then <laughs> I was thinking small. And with the array that we had, I really thought something like a 1,000 watt inverter, which converts DC to AC, um, would be just fine for us. But what ended up happening is we bought a couple panels, and we and we ended up not being able to use the smaller one because we had so much juice coming in. Now inverter, just so you know, it just takes that, that direct current and it turns it into alternating current so that you can use it on your appliances. So what we ended up doing is buying, yes, a bigger inverter. And this one actually is a 2,500 watt inverter which has a 5,000 watt peak. Now the peak when you are looking for inverters, I don't care what brand you go with, make sure you look for the peak because the peak is when you when you plug something in and you start it. And that inverter has to cover that surge to start your appliances, to start your radio, to start your TV, to um, you know turn the refrigerator on. So looking at a high peak is going to be very very important. Now I I chose this brand just simply because it had a lot of nice features. It came with the three grounded AC outlets. Um, it can power up to three or more household appliances. It had a nice little USB port. Um, it also has, a, a, when it's on, it has a volt uh, watt meter that keeps track of the power usage. So it had a lot, a lot of good stuff. And the other feature that I like, that some people don't like with their inverter, but I like it, it had a low voltage, a shutdown and low voltage alarm. These units on Amazon run... A it is um, $194 with wiring. Now this shipping. is the other important thing. With a any any brand inverter you need to use four gauge heavy duty AC um, cable wire and if you look on ours and this is this is some heavy 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 duty stuff we actually went to a battery shop and, and forgive the mess and uh, had the guy put the ends on here for us very, very important to stick with heavy gauge wire. And the other thing is, you don't need a uh, hundred feet of wire. You want to keep your inverter as close to your batteries as possible. So what I would suggest, um, if you're doing this, this small backup solar array, uh, stick with a bigger inverter. You really just can't go wrong with spending that extra money up front and getting it because if you say do decide to add on a couple more panels, I mean who knows that's exactly what we did and here we invested this one and it didn't go to waste but we ended up um, 
uh, you know, buying, buying the bigger one. So that's what I would suggest if you are looking at starting that Okay, backup so the system. next component you're going to be looking at is a charge controller. And look at this. This is just a real small one. Um, just note that a lot of the home kits like Harbor Freight and Renergy does include, with their kit, a charge controller. So then you really don't even have to worry about purchasing one extra. But because we wanted to add on more solar panels to our Harbor Freight array, we ended up having to buy a larger charge controller. You know, a charge controller just actually just prevents excessive overcharge of the batteries. And it does need to be sized according to your array. And I'm going to tell you right now just to really keep it simple for people. 30 amp charge controller basically for a backup system is what is basically what you're going to need. You know, even in our house with our 2 kilowatt array, we have a 60 amp charge controller. So jumping from a 30 amp to a 60 amp, you're looking at more like a 1 kilowatt array. So for backup systems, 30 amp charge controller is going to be so Just real quickly, perfect. I'll show you guys. This is the Sunforce, a 30 amp digital charger that I bought many moons ago. It's 80 bucks now. It is a really good charge controller. I like it. It, it, it prevents the overcharging of 12 volt batteries. Um, it, you can use it with 12 volt uh, solar panels and it does handle up to 30 amps uh, of array at, and up to 450 watts of uh, solar power power and your your system's probably not even going to be that big if you're doing a backup plan the other one that i would recommend is a renergy 30 amp pwm charge controller this one's 70 bucks um i think this one is probably just as good as the sunforce uh it's got a, a couple other little ditties on it that i'm not going to get into but th these are both very very doable and well respected charge controllers for a small setup. Okay, so real quickly, I know there's a lot of experts out there and you want, you guys are biting at the bit to talk about MPPT charge controllers, aren't you? Okay, I know you are. But remember, I'm talking to people who are just wanting basic setups, say for your off-grid cabin, or maybe even an RV, or if you live in a residential areas and you want that backup plan. Something like a Sunforce 30 amp charge controller is really great for the that basic setup. Now, if you really got to know how we come up with a 30 amp charge controller, come with me. I'll show you how. Okay, so here's uh, the real life tutorial. Ha! Here, here I am. I'm in the reflection. What you're going to do here is when you're sizing your charge controller is whatever panels that you have, you're going to have to take them and you can only, all you have to do is to flip them over and on the back, oh look, there's all this really great information. It's going to tell you how many watts that panel is. It's going to give you other stuff like your, your rated voltage. All, a lot of this stuff is very important. But when sizing the charge controller, what I like to do is look at the short circuit current. That's going to give you amps. And this is a really small panel, but say it was a 100 watt panel and it had 5 amps per panel. And I have, let's just make up, I've got four panels. And I'm looking at a 30 amp charge controller versus a 60 amp charge controller. Which one do I get? Well, what you do is you take your short circuit current amperage and you times it by how many panels you have, and I said we have four, so four times five, remember I said that that 100 watt panel had five amps for the short circuit current, that will give us 20 amps. So do I buy a 30 amp charge controller or a 60? Well, a 30, because you don't want, you don't really need to oversize the charge okay, controller so now we're going to talk point. about batteries, because this is an area where, yeah, if you really wanted to be cheap, and save money, you could. Uh, you could actually use the excuses that this is just a backup system and I really don't need to spend that much money on batteries. Therefore, I am just going to go to the automotive center and buy myself a starter battery, a car battery. Well, you know what? In the long run, you're going to end up replacing those batteries. Why? Number one, a starter battery, or AKA car battery, is designed completely different from one of these marine deep cycle batteries. It has thinner plates, it's got different chemistry, and it is designed to deliver high bursts of current. High bursts of current. 
to start your vehicle. So it is not designed to be discharged slowly. It's not designed uh, to um, be, it's not designed to be charged slowly. So the problem with a cheaper starter battery is over time, it's going to corrode. The chemistry in the plates are just completely different. So bite, bite the bullet, people, and invest for your small, your small backup system a marine deep cycle battery, or what they're called, deep cycle. There's marine, now these are interstate brand batteries in the 12 volt. We actually have the 6 volt in our larger battery bank, but I do want to point out that these are lead acid batteries. Now, for the most part, I believe that a lot of you at home are going to be buying the lead acid battery. Uh, there are other um, batteries on the market. They are, they're sealed. There's the gel ones. But right now I'm going to talk about the lead acid because if you do get lead acid batteries, there is some care and maintenance involved, even if you only have two batteries. The care and maintenance comes from the electrolyte solution that is inside the battery. Uh, the battery has, I think, 35% sulfuric acid in it, and the rest is 65% water. It's like electrolyte solution. And what ends up happening is over the course of time of charging and discharging, the sulfuric acid actually will cling to the plates of your battery. So you will have to keep checking those periodically. So as part of that care and maintenance of the batteries, what you want to do is purchase yourself either a really good hydrometer or what we use for our bigger six volt system is this refractometer. And this is, we actually love this. I hope you can see it. This is an X-Tech. And for a little bit more, I would actually probably go with something like this. It is a little more accurate and even with a small system like this accuracy is really going to be important to the maintenance and care of those batteries so and, and actually you can look at my starry store i actually have this in the store that makes it a little bit easier for you to find it online the other thing that you want to do with the batteries is a temperature control just like your car battery um, Cold, extreme cold isn't good. Extreme heat isn't go good. So even with a small system with maybe only two batteries or four batteries, you want to make sure that you are storing your batteries where there is not temperatures extreme. The other thing is make sure if you do store them inside that they are properly vented. Even two batteries it can give off some gas. So make sure that All right, they are properly that's the vented. end of the tutorial. And just remember, people, don't skimp on the components that you're going to buy, even for your backup system. Remember, the investment is in you. So go get yourself some good batteries, a charge controller, an inverter, and some good heavy gauge wire. And you'll be on your way to self-reliance. Ah, I love it. Okay, until next time, people, God bless you, and keep coming back for more. And love those comments. Oh, and don't forget to visit me at my off-grid, www.offgridevolution.com website, where I do continue to write articles and share our lifestyle and some homesteading tips. Okay? So, oh, and don't forget the Starry Store because that's where you'll find a lot of the items too so you don't have to go all over the internet and search. All right, God bless.